My grandparents bought this place in 1918. They had rented it for a year prior to that. So it's been in the family for just over a hundred years. I've been here all my life and that's a good thing. <laughs> they put up grain on a lot of these fields back then and they also raised horses and mules which they sold to the Army Remount Service at that time. There was a lot of effort in the early 1900s to uh, help the homesteaders. So they'd moved into this area and were really struggling. The climate was really work worked against them. The uh, Ag Experiment Station that was set up did a lot of work to test everything from corn and wheat to kale and, and uh, watermelon. At one time it was all grain fields, but that kind of played out. It took about 20 or 30 years for them to figure out that nothing else really was going to work. And so then they just decided we need to work with the system that we have. And by the 40s, they kind of settled on livestock and hay as the only options for this area. Our business is cow-calf operation. We grow uh, calves and sell in the fall. And the fields, we grow most all of it is native meadows and even the higher ground is all native grasses. I've been here 38 years. This is my wife's family's place. It's a beautiful place, nice place to live. Well, we flood irrigate because it's cost effective. It's beneficial in a lot of respects for what we, what we do, how we do it. You take water out periodically during the early summer months till we cut hay in July. You recharge the subsurface water of the soil profile, keeps the creeks charged to some degree throughout the summer, keeps the temperatures cooler for the fish. It grows a crop, provides habitat for these geese that you hear flying around and ducks. Flood irrigation kind of uh, has a three-pronged uh, benefits. Um, there's an ecological benefit, a societal benefit, and an uh, economic benefit. This water ultimately becomes pretty cheap and relatively easy to manage for a landowner if they have the appropriate infrastructure in place for it. This flood irrigation does play a pivotal role in habitat, plays a pivotal role in groundwater recharge, and it's just uh, extremely important around here, especially in such a closed basin. Flood irrigation on historic wetlands effectively serves as a surrogate for the wetland habitats that were on that land before it was converted to agriculture. You have those wetland characteristics because you have all that runoff during the uh, spring period. All these things wrapped into kind of one process of flood irrigation that benefits fisheries, benefits other terrestrial species like sage grass, and it keeps us climate resilient by storing water underground and saving it for that next dry period so producers are productive into the future as well. It's the most benign way of providing a whole bunch of good back to the whole system. And it's worked over the years. This is something that's been around a long time. The landowners have adjusted, you know, the water comes at different times. Uh, years are dramatically different. So people have learned how to make this system work and it takes active management. There's ways to make flood irrigation more productive, to have higher yields for livestock forage. and. That's the win-win that we're trying to get to, to be able to make producers more profitable and ensure that that habitat continues to be on the landscape. It all revolves around Mother Nature. All this hay, hay we raise goes through my cows. Since I've been feeding on them all winter long, I have to go in and drag the fields, all this manure back down into the the soil, it, it's a, also a soil builder. There's a lot of seeds from the hay we've been feeding all winter long. It all works as kind of a cover for new growth coming along. Farmers or producers are often criticized for taking water away from wildlife. But if you look more closely in places like the Hardy Basin, the opposite is actually true. If you get a bird's eye view, you can see all of the willows and lost real estate that is 
non-productive in a hay aspect, but it's productive in wildlife habitat. There's a perception across the West that the majority of these systems are these natural, untouched landscapes, when in fact, the opposite is true. If you lose that flood irrigation practice, you are losing the last semblance of wetland habitat on that landscape, habitat that was there for, for eons. The science is telling us that climate change is affecting wetland habitats in a real way. We've lost almost 50% of wetland resources in the, in the Great Basin. We are in Harney County, is the north, northernmost part of our Sonic region. The Sonic is Southern Oregon, Northeast California. Sonic connects wintering habitat in the Central Valley of California and other parts uh, south with the breeding grounds in the Canadian prairies and the boreal forests of Alaska. So this was the last fueling station for birds before they embarked in a 2,000 plus mile journey to their breeding grounds. That early growth that we get on these meadows is really high quality. It's really high forage quality. So it provides the energy source for a lot of these birds that are moving through. Provides a habitat they need to rest, and it's just essentially a big gas station for them. And so it's just another aspect of, of um, how positive a habitat this, this can be for a, a lot of the species that I think we all love. You get up in the morning and come out, and, and you can just hear whatever's here, all the birds and the geese, and whether it's cranes, and you can just everything's alive and it's enjoyable to, to have the peace and quiet and enjoy the the wildlife doing what they do i guess <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody when flood irrigation can occur and be efficient on these big landscapes like the hardy basin wildlife and uh, and ranching and everything goes hand in hand we embrace it <laughs>